Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, and today I'm going to do a little bit of live deck building with you for a run that I'm starting on my channel next week. I will be playing Stella Clark in a solo run through Innsmouth. So let's go ahead and look at Stella and talk a little bit about her abilities. Now, this is voted on by my patrons of the channel. They wanted me to play uh, Survivor, and then they all said Stella. And there's some good reasons for playing Stella in solo. She's got a really nice stat line, 3 willpower, 2 intellect, 3 combat, and 4 agility. Kind of similar to Skids, who I played solo on my channel some time ago. Just the only difference being uh, he had 2 willpower and 3 intellect. Totally different card pool though, so they really wanted to uh, have me explore the survivor card pool more on my channel, and I am happy to oblige. Anyway, her ability is, after your you fail a skill test, you may take an additional action during your turn this round, once per round. So basically you have four actions as long as one of those uh, skill tests that you took, either during the mythos phase or during your turn, ended up being a failure. So how can you take advantage of that, of course, in the survivor card pool? Her Elder Sign effect is plus one, but you may instead choose to automatically fail the skill test to heal one damage and one horror. Essentially, you're going to want to do this uh, if you wanted to fail the skill test anyway, and there aren't some uh, other awful consequences. Very, very tanky character. Stella has eight health and eight sanity, so really nice for surviving basically everything. And I'm going to take that advantage of that, I think, through through Innsmouth. Now, uh, when I like to do deck building for any campaign that I'm about to play, I do have that campaign in mind. Um, so in a few minutes, I'm going to talk a little bit about the campaign, but try to keep it as spoiler light as possible. But I do want to play her, not just the cards that came with her her set, because she's one of the investigator starter investigators that has a whole deck that came with her, which I'll talk about too. I want to tweak it a little bit, make sure that it performs well in Innsmouth. Her deck building is otherwise very, very simple. Zero to five neutral cards, zero to five survivor, and that's it. So uh, she does come with three of her signature uh, ne Neither Rain Nor Snow cards, skill cards, and then um, her one copy of Called by the Mist, which we'll see again when we open up the uh, deck builder. Okay, so let's talk about Innsmouth. I have not played this on my channel, and it's not a campaign I am super, super familiar with. I've played it um, maybe four or five times now. But the things that I remember, again, here come some spoilers, are a couple of challenges that are unique to the game at this point. Um, I think it's a fairly fair campaign in terms of trying to make you do a little bit of everything. And in solo, that's, that's good, so you don't have to actually worry about uh, one stat or another. But there seem to be a lot of enemies that have on engage effects. Here's a, a lurking deep one, for example, um, and you draw the enemy, it engages you, you just take a damage. There's no test, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no real window to play a different card or ignore the damage in any special way, other than cards that, of course, let you ignore damage. Um, so you never know. There's just testless damage um, hiding in the encounter deck. It's not just the damage, though. Some other uh, enemies make you discard cards, take horror, uh, get attacked. Um, so yeah, this guy here, the lurking deep one though, is with you throughout the whole campaign. So packing some extra soak is, is a good idea. Now, the other part of this is if you evade enemies, you're going to re-engage them in the upkeep phase as long as you are still at their location. This guy here doesn't have hunter. So if you can get out, evade and get out, then that's one way to solve the problem. However, with four agility, that's not so easy. Okay, next we have a lot of locations with fairly high shroud, and those tend to be the VP locations. I don't have like the classic uh, cavern or whatever it is from the uh, title pool uh, or title tunnel set here, but this is from the second scenario. Uh, so if you want to get VP, uh, you need to be able to pass a high shroud test or figure out a different way to get those clues. Um, many of those do have more than just one clue on them in solo. This one just has the one, but it requires that you save a little bit, a little bit back for these, um, these locations. Um, and then the other thing that is notable, I think is there's a lot of big maps, um, a lot of sprawling maps that may not be 
easily um, identifiable at the beginning of the scenario in terms of which way you're supposed to go because there's random locations that are are thrown around the map. So backtracking is something you do need to do, which is tough in solo because just like scouting around, I think is is not easy. So here are some possible solutions in the survivor card pool uh, on engage effects. I kind of mentioned already uh, bringing some more soak, but potentially healing. Um, I'm going to think about bandages maybe for the high shroud VP locations, especially you just need to get those. Um, if you want to do everything, of course, uh, there's old key ring and look what I found, which come in Stella's uh, deck. These are going to make it easier to, because it reduces the shroud of those locations. Um, and then look what I found makes it so that even if you fail, you've got a chance of getting the clues. Um, I don't think I need to pack too many events that get more than one clue, but look what I found has, of course, special synergy with Stella. So why not that one? And as far as big maps goes, uh, track choose is, is kind of the only real movement compression you can get in, in survivor. There's a few skill cards and maybe a few events that you can do to, to move a little bit more quickly, but, uh, yeah, track shoes also has the interesting interaction with Stella where it's just a test that if you fail, you didn't invest anything in it in the first place. We'll look at the card again when I bring up Arkham DB. Now, the first scenario, the Pit of Despair, is tough. It's kind of the only one that I'm really thinking about for the whole campaign, because if you can't get through that with a lot of the victory points and getting the keys and removing tokens and all of that, uh, I think the rest of the campaign becomes much more difficult. In other words, because of the sort of strange thing that Innsmouth ha has with uh, when you can spend victory points, or experience anyways, um, you need to front load as much as you can do. Otherwise, those later scenarios start to get a lot harder. I don't think it's one of the hardest scenarios or campaigns rather. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the easier campaigns of, of the kind of middle bunch that we have. Um, but if you don't do well, <laughs> it does snowball a little bit on you. So I'm going to do the best I can. All right. One other thing before I get into the deck builder, and now no more spoilers, is what am I going to do with Quick Learner? Another good reason to play it on my channel, right? It's the name of my channel. There's a ruling. Sorry, let's read the card first. Um, it's a permanent, costs you 4 XP since it's a level 4 card. During or before the first action of each of your turns, each skill test you perform gets plus 1 difficulty. During or after the third action of each of your turns, each skill test you perform gets minus 1 difficulty. So there's a fairly recent uh, ruling that someone emailed in to the, uh, the rules team at FFG and asked, when does this actually take effect? During or before your first action with your turns, can that be something that happens during the mythos phase? Because that's before your turns, right? Before your first action of your turn. Um, and they ruled that, yes, that the plus one difficulty is something that should uh, be applied to skill tests you take before your turn even starts. Likewise, uh, skill tests that happen during the enemy phase or during the upkeep phase, I suppose, if that happens, uh, also gets minus one difficulty. So that's not so usual, though. I mean, Stella certainly is not the kind of investigator who's taking skill tests during those other parts of the game. So the real question is, <laughs> does this make sense? <laughs> Are you putting four XP uh, into your deck just to increase the difficulty of skill tests um, during the Mythos phase? I probably should put this on, on the screen here. Uh, in fact, I, I will. Hold on. Here we go. Rotting Remains. If this is a test that is normally three, right? For each point you fail by, take one horror. The maximum you can fail by is three because you cannot have your skill value go below zero when calculating the results of the test. However, if the skill test actually has plus one difficulty up to four, now you can suddenly take four horror. Hmm, a lot tougher of a card. A lot of Stella Clark decks out there, a lot of Quick Learner decks have not just one copy of Quick Learner, but two, because that minus two difficulty really makes things a lot easier during your, say, third or fourth action, because you're getting a fourth action uh, with Stella since you fail a test somewhere. Okay. A difficulty five rotting remains, taking five horror just, you know, because, say, uh, you draw an auto fail or something, that is 
mm, maybe not something you really want out of putting 8 XP into your deck. So a lot of people ask me, what am I going to do? Am I going to play with the, the ruling, which is not yet in the FAQ, so maybe not has officially been mm, thought over, mulled over by the current development team? Or am I going to go with what the original developer, Maxine, uh, actually said about this? That we have on record, I think, through a Discord message that she said, uh, and she designed the card, that this should not apply before your turn starts. And probably shouldn't apply afterwards either. The wording is a little uh, bad. I, I do agree that during or before the first action of each of your turns, right, could be ambiguous. It could be during or before your first action of your turns, or during or before your first action of each of your turns. So anytime you take a test before your first action, this should count uh, for plus one difficulty. Um, that is my inclination of the reading. It should be that because why are you spending so much XP for something that could just make you explode during the mythos phase? That doesn't sound like fun to me. So I'm going to go with that. I don't think the card is nearly as good. And yeah, I mean, are you, there's some risk involved with, I suppose, playing it the way that it's been ruled and maybe that's kind of fun. Um, but I don't think so. I think that is kind of not intended and Look, the templating on the cards in this game is sometimes good and sometimes bad, and they don't always catch these sorts of errors. Uh, so I'd rather go with the intention when we actually know what the intention is, but also just the way that the card reads and how it makes sense, how most people, including myself, always thought that this card should work. Um, it shouldn't be in the mythos phase at all. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about... Uh, I suppose, some of the survivor archetypes that we might be playing in in Stella. So I'll put Quicker Learner in at some point because it makes a lot of sense. But there's a lot of different things that you can do in Survivor these days that synergize with mm, a lot of other cards in the card pool, but also maybe with Stella herself. So one is just the fail by mechanic. So when you have Quick Learner or you're just finding a difficult test, if you take um, a test that you know you're going to fail on with the benefit of doing something based on that failure, you're saving yourself on some actions, right? You take an investigate, you fail it and get two clues instead of one. For um, dumb luck, which we'll see in a second, you evade an enemy but actually remove it from the board altogether. That's really good if you fail by, by two or, or three um, or, or less. So that's one angle you can take. And you can find a lot of those um, after you fail a skill test by some amount, do something or other in, in the card pool. So we want to load up on a lot of those, but maybe not entirely because you do want to get more action compression out of those other actions during your turn. Difficulty zero is the other end of it, right? So quick learner may also make it easier to fail tests, but also to pass tests during the third and fourth action of your turn. So what can you additionally get out of that? We have a lot of, of synergy beyond just the old key ring, uh, flashlight, that kind of thing, um, which is just passing tests. We have something like uh, Shadow Light, which has been tabooed to 2xp, but we also have, um, what is it? Uh, the one where you're evading or fighting. Um, uh, exploit weakness. Yeah. Um, that one is seems also like a good idea. You could save it till the end of your turn to do a bunch of damage and to, to a lead enemy or uh, automatically evade and discard them. The only issue with that is that enemies tend to be engaged with you at the beginning of your turn and not at the end of your turn. Like what are you doing with the rest of your actions before you get a chance to do that? Maybe you're moving and then dealing with them. Um, maybe, or maybe you're evading them first and then fighting them in some way. I don't know. That's the only struggle. When I've played Stull before, sometimes it's if you have an enemy that you draw and you've got difficulty plus one or two, can you pass those tests? Maybe you don't want to because you want to fail them, but maybe you already failed a test already. Like, what are you doing with your whole turn if you're waiting for that minus two difficulty on your third and fourth actions? Okay, something to think about. Uh, the third thing is lots and lots of uh, survivor cards interact with the discard pile. 
including, of course, getting things back from the discard pile. Um, the campaign in Smith does have ways of putting things in your discard pile involuntarily, so it's nice to take advantage of the fact that you can get those things back. So we might add like a scrounge for supplies, uh, resourceful, maybe things like winging it or improvised weapon are a good idea to, uh, to put into the deck as well. Finally, we've got a pretty expansive dark horse package which makes all of your stats just a little bit better if you have no resources. So this is good if you think you're going to be spending your resources a lot and you don't really need to use them for, for much. Um, it's tough when the events, like Look What I Found, do cost two. It's not bad for the uh, gold key ring, which only costs one. So it's a bit of an iffy archetype. I'm, I'm thinking about it for maybe the level five version, which is just permanent, and it's just kind of always an option, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. All right, so that's the kinds of things we need to think through when we go through the card pool. So let's do it. Okay, here we go. We have Stella and Arkham DB. What I have on the screen for you here is everything, of course, that is in her starter deck. So what I like to do first is just think about which of these cards I'm willing to keep and which ones that I'd rather not have. And then with those cuts, I can start looking at the full card pool and adding in things that would be helpful. Okay, as far as weapons go, there's a chunk of three health enemies. There's more of those two health enemies, like the um, some one of the deep ones you saw earlier. Um, killing things is going to be hard. We only have three combat. There are ways to improve that, but not a whole lot of melee weapons. Certainly not at level zero. So we could do Fire Axe if we want to do the whole, um, Fire Axe is over here, if we want to do the whole Dark Horse thing. But then we need to be careful about what else is if we're playing. Um, but I think we, we keep the Derringer because it is something that does have the if you fail clause here, so uh, not horrible. I mean, uh, firing at five for Stella is pretty good. Um, and it has cool synergy with, again, the fail stuff. So let's 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 leave that in. Uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales one of the worst cards in the game, right? Uh, we're, we have no interest in this. I think healing one horror over four rounds and taking a hand slot is like pretty bad. I think we just cut that and don't talk about it anymore. The key ring is uh, excellent. We want this. That's like how we're going to probably get rid of those four shroud locations. Like we play the old key ring, we investigate, we fail anyway, use look what I found because we're now down to a two shroud. That's, that's the synergy we're looking for. Rabbit's Foot is really good. Um, this is a core set card, and then they gave us another copy in Silla Clark. In fact, before we forget, I do want to put the upgraded one into our side deck, just because um, you don't usually play this card in anyone but Stella. You can, but I think this is our card draw um, and, and looking for things in your deck. Okay. We've got Granny Orn as an ally. Expensive. Plus one willpower, but this lets you modulate how much you fail by, which makes sense in the overall deck. Uh, is it good enough over the other level zero allies? So basically we're looking at um, Pete or Madame LeBranche if we're doing any kind of uh, Dark Horse, which I don't feel like we need to. I don't think that's, that's the, the plan here because we wouldn't be taking advantage of our ability that much. I think the level zero is quite good. Um, it doesn't let you pass tests, but it can keep you from failing by too much on some tough treacheries, but still getting the benefit of failing. So we'll keep that. And I think I want to keep Mysterious Raven too, because this is testless uh, clues. Hmm. Okay, uh, Scrapper, I like this card when it is not the level zero version. Level three version is quite good. Um, I feel like playing it is a trap. I think this is like not really what you want to do at level zero because you're investing a lot of money and I don't see a lot of um, resource generation here in, in the starter deck. We can maybe fix that, but let's dump it for now. Okay, look what I found is staying. Test of Will. This is the card that lets you maybe cancel treacheries. Um, 
It also lets you take a mythos test that you could fail if it's a treachery that, you know, say, doesn't have a test on it. it does cost one, which isn't very much. Um, hmm. Um, how resilient is she to the treacheries in general? I feel like this is not going to make the cut, but I'm going to leave it here for now. Okay, dumb luck. Uh, after you fail a skill test by two or less during an invasion attempt against a non-elite enemy, place on top of the encounter deck. Okay, this is kind of weird, right? Putting it back on top of the encounter deck means that you'll draw it again. And you know that's the only encounter card that you'll ever draw because there's only one player. That in of itself is kind of neat, right? Because you can, let's say that there's a, a tough enemy and you fail a skill test by two or less during the evasion. So you just take an evade at all. And with even Granny, maybe you can get this down to a three. So it has to be an evade of three, maybe, or or better, like you kind of guarantee it. And then you just draw the enemy again next round and maybe just get a better chance at uh, getting rid of it rather than something else. It's not horrible. I'm trying to think that though the pitfall in Innsmouth is, again, do you really want to draw those enemies again? They have something a little bit tricky on them. Um, now the level two version which we will definitely take, places the enemy on the bottom of the encounter deck. So it's basically gone. You're not going to see it again in solo, probably. All right, what else we got? Grit your teeth. Um, play after a fail that you fail a skill test, plus one to each of your skills from the end of the round. In solo, there's something to be said for this card. You might need plus one to each of your skills. This is fast. Only cost you one. And you're never going to play it unless it's in a Stella deck. It's still not good, but maybe it does something. Gets you that extra one. I'll think about it. I don't really want it in the deck, though. I'm sorry, we, we missed one. Live and learn. I think we keep this. This is after you skill uh, fail a skill test. You basically get to do the test again at plus two, so it's not an action. This is the kind of action compression you get in, in Survivor. We want to leave this in because it's got very nice synergy with Stella and the other uh, failure cards. So yeah, we, we leave that in. Lucky is also a possibility. We could have both. I'm not sure I want both because of the deck space. Unfortunately, in Survivor, there's not like a way to get your deck size to be bigger in the same way that I did with Underworld support in, sorry, uh, Underworld Market in Skids. So we just have to live with this. Okay, level zero, oops. It's only good if there's two enemies at your location. Sometimes that will happen. I guarantee you, I will draw an enemy and then there's gonna be another hunter around or uh, a boss enemy that shows up and I'm like, mm, I actually could have used this. However, it's not gonna make the level zero cut. It's basically a commit. And then we've got will to survive. Um, four cost, which is quite expensive for the deck. And you just don't reveal chaos tokens for the next skill test you perform this turn. So it allows you to instantly pass whatever you're trying to pass. I don't think this is also gonna make it. I think this is good for certain decks. It's just not this one. That leaves us with 10 cards to stick into the deck because we are have to keep the neither rain nor snows which by the way have this like plus three if you fail cancel all effects the failed test it is what a strong card i mean i'm not going to complain this is a fantastic card for for stella and for anyone who could just say forget it like this mythos card is going to make me um discard four cards or something nope the funny part about it is it gives you plus three so it's hard to fail it anyway but there you go and then take heart is more economy which again we don't have much of it's just like the rabbit's foot and take heart and i think that we might want to put some other economy in if we start putting in something that's more expensive mm, so a schaffner's right 
or just emergency cash. I don't know. Like paying for these events over and over again, I think is, is tough. Okay, so that leaves us with 10 cards we can beef up this deck with. Ones that are be a little bit better than we had before. By the way, Drawing Thin, which costs 3 XP now, could be our economy. This card is busted. I've never played with it because I've seen people play with it, and it's just nutty. Especially what you can do with Track Shoes. Uh, speaking of, let's throw the Track Shoes in here. I think it's worth the deck slot. Getting to plus 1 agility also makes a lot of sense. So I think we, we do, do with that. Now things start to get a bit more expensive. This is four, this is just one, this is just one, um, but these are three. So I'm, I'm starting to think about Schaffners. We have not that many items. Schaffners is only worth it if um, getting it out of the discard pile makes sense. Uh, or you have item synergy like like Bob Jenkins or or something like that. That's kind of the only time it makes sense, other than playing in multiplayer where you can share. We aren't sharing any resources. Let's look through what else we have at level zero. I, I think I want to put resourceful in. I think that just makes sense um, for giving getting, getting back the neither rain nor snows. So let's do that. We could fill up the rest of this with just skills, honestly. Let's see if we're missing anything uh, crucial in the assets. We could get flashlights or lanterns. So this is an interesting idea to add to our difficulty reduction. Remember, the old key rings discard themselves. You can get them back with resourceful or um, scavenging if we go that route I'm not so sure about that um or uh scrounge for supplies maybe this is kind of a good card and it starts to uh, lean a little bit more asset heavy than i want to like you start saying oh what the tool belt maybe i can stick all these things on the tool belt and then you have the uh, chainsaw which is also a tool for later i don't know solo requires that you <clears throat> that you have um, actions and can do a lot with those actions. Lantern itself has that cool deal one damage to an enemy thing. Hmm. You know, I'm going to put this in over flashlight. I think, I mean, we might even upgrade it or upgrade flashlights into the upgraded flashlight because that's combos with these things, but there's something about the minus one that always happens that sounds pretty good to me. Um, hmm. We'll come back to this. Okay, I think that's better than flashlight. It's, I think we got the key ring for it, basically. It's cheap. We could upgrade the lanterns, too. Um, I don't think we need the grizzly totem. Our rabbit's foot is going to be enough for the accessory slot. If we did more discard synergy, we could think about the improvised shield. Oh, here's a thing we could do. Okay, remember how Stella Clark's uh, Elder Sign is healing one and one? I know it's just sort of the obvious thing, but she's so tanky that you just assume that you'll draw an Elder Sign at some point, and it's going to be a, during a test that you want to fail. Heal the one, heal the uh, in the thick of it uh, damage and horror. I think we do it. Could be wrong, but I think we do that. That way it's online from, from turn one, right? I don't think there's enough parlays to do fine clothes. Don't think we need to do it. So we want to maybe add in something that has XP. We could right away upgrade a Derringer. I don't know. Let's, let's keep looking through our card pool. Meat Cleaver is another thing you can do to fight. Melee weapons are good, and this can do extra damage if you take Pete Sylvester, basically. Um, I don't I don't think so. Um, we don't have a way of discarding things really right now. Newspaper. Hmm. We could spec into the 
upgraded newspaper, but the problem with the upgraded newspaper is there's not really enough places to get extra clues in solo. But this is basically, you get plus two every time you spend the clues, which is honestly something you can do a lot of in a few of the Innsmouth scenarios. Ooh, this is, hmm, I don't know, maybe if this were a different survivor, but this is kind of interesting. It's real cheap. Um, pocket multi-tool is another thing you can do. Putting a lot of XP into something like Spring Loaded, which is just a Lucky on tap, that's really good. Or Lucky Charm itself, which basically lets you use it more than once if you're, you're failing a skill test. I don't think that's that good. I think it seems to make sense in uh, seems to make sense in in uh, Stella, but I feel like the Spring Loaded is just better. Hmm. How can we put everything in the deck, right? All right. Um, so Schaffner's, I don't think makes any sense. I think it's it's no better than emergency cash if you are not playing any um, discard synergy, scavenging really. Um, sledgehammer that lets you uh, fail tests more easily, right? Okay, like there's something to be said for a two-handed weapon, but I don't think in solo you want to do that. Talisman. Mm. Stray Cat is kind of cool. Ooh, how about the Sparrow Mask? We could have one of these. We're going to get them. We're going to probably recharge those uh, fairly often. I, I can put one in. I have three left. Oh, my God. Matchbox. This is the thing that maybe is a better combo with um, the old keyring or with Lantern than than anything else that's pretty good the problem with it is that i'm likely only getting one clue at a time one clue per per round it's cheap what else we got i don't think this is a short supply deck i mean like i just don't think that makes any sense um We could go down to a one of track shoes. I'm not sure. This is another lucky. I could put lucky in here. Um, this isn't good enough. Test of will we might cut. Act of desperation. I don't think we need to do. Belly of the beast. This is a way to get clues. Hmm. One clue. One clue. One card. One resource. Successfully evade an enemy by two or more. I'm going to have four. We might have five. Um, hmm. It is nice to have a way of getting clues that is not, in case there's a locked door or something, that's maybe worth it. Act of Desperation, I don't think so. Um, Belly of the Beast is what we just looked at. Uh, calling in favors, no. Cutting distraction. So I think Belly the Beast could be worth it if we got rid of the uh, the Raven. They're kind of the same card, but this one doesn't... I mean, it's not automatic, and it doesn't take up an ally slot. Hmm. Cutting distraction, elaborate distraction. I don't think there's going to be enough enemies for this, but there could be. Um end of the road we don't need to chunk up our our hand that way i don't know if we have enough money for this is what makes me think of doing dark horse right we could just go so resource light okay let's keep going uh bait and switch no fire flight i don't think we need this Exploit weakness. This is what I was talking about before. Hmm. Okay. How do I get the difficulty to be zero at this stage of the game? Right? I don't think we have any way of doing this given that we don't have gumption. We don't have... Um, we could put gumption in. Hmm. We could do that. 
uh, but we don't have Quick Learner online yet. Could just be in our deck, though. Um, again, there's not any way to add these things later, really. Okay, what else we got? Well, we could do this. We could put a bunch of XP into a makeshift trap. Interesting. Poisonous might be cool. Simple. They don't move. This could be easier for the exploit weakness. Whew, we've got some options here. I don't think we play lucky. Um, scrounge, maybe. Maybe. Okay. I, I kind of like waylay here. It is expensive, but it's also a decent live and learn target and could get me to kill one of those big enemies. I think we do this. I think we need like the equivalent of like a big event. Okay, 29 cards. Trench coat. Too expensive. All right, um, stall for time is kind of cute. So this card also, it's got deep ones on the on the art and it sort of solves them in some interesting way because you don't disengage from them. Um, yeah, okay. If you fail, it goes back to your hand. So it's sort of a free first action quick learner. You just spend the... Uh, the resource. That's kind of fun. I kind of want to put that in the deck and get rid of something else. Okay, notably, we don't have any skills that we added in. So we added resourceful, but we don't have like a manual decks. We don't have an overpower. We don't have guts. Um, this is probably not great. Winging it is also an interesting idea here. This could be better than our, our lanterns because you basically you put it into the discard pile for the minus one you send the one for a clue. Um, and then you play it again, get the two clues from the discard pile. I kind of want to play that. I like that a little better than the lanterns, maybe. i got to think about that. Okay, our, um, our skills, like Grizzled makes a lot of sense here. We can put Deep One on here. We could put Humanoid. We could, we could just get this later, of course, too. Um, I mean, it's one of those ones where you'd put, like, always prepare, I suppose. Okay. Um, then we got things like uh, Survival Instinct, Stunning Blow, uh, Rise to the Occasion we don't need, Long Shot for doing dealing with three health enemies. Okay. I don't think we do that. Let's look back at our, our, our cards again. So I think we're a little bit too asset heavy. Granny is really good. In fact, I'd probably just want to have the upgraded one. Level zero is perfectly fine too. It soaks horror and allows you to make those other cards work. Do I have enough of them to make them work? I don't think we play Test of Will as much as I like it. Mm. This is our way of dealing with enemies along with the Derringer and Waylay. We need to be able to, to um, afford this stuff. So I think we need at least one emergency cash. And then we need to cut some other things, I think. I think having a willpower boost is good. I think we want to do this. But I'm thinking about the lanterns uh, not making the cut now. The wingets and lanterns are very similar. It's just that this gives me plus one all the time. That's so much better than this, right? Right? Hand slot's an issue. Um, this is also an action to play. 
okay, we can upgrade into them if we really want to. Um, I think one Sparrow Mask is okay. And we have to spend our In the Thick of It um, XP. So my suggestion is one up. Oof, we've got all kinds of things to think about here. Um, yeah. So my suggestion is maybe an upgraded look what I found, but this just as easily could be upgraded skills like, um, a, a gumption. And that allows us to put maybe one exploit weakness in. I like the way that deals with enemies. And then for the other two, we could upgrade a look what I found and we can get that back. I'm still a little concerned about the, the money. Okay, let's let's do that though. Let's do a look what I found, level two. So this one has a uh, fail by three. I'm really, really concerned about the money. I think this needs to be a two of, and we gotta get rid of something else. This ain't coming back. We can do a one of track shoes. That should get our curve down. Let's see. Let's take a look at our, uh, uh, where is it? Our, our charts. Yeah. I mean, we've got two, four. That's the, uh, the granny orn bunch of three cost items like the Derringer and the waylays. And what's the other one? Five track shoes. Waylay track shoes. And Derringer. Yep, that's five. And then the rest of it's pretty cheap. So that feels okay. Okay. I think there's some more expensive events we could spec into later. There's not that many skills, but I think that having the neither rain nor snows that we could get back to hand with resourceful is good. And the gumption, uh, I think I do want two of these. I think we do want to lean into the difficulty zero as much as we can. But I don't think the upgraded key rings are, are good because there aren't two clues on location so often, but um yeah, I think we, we just want to make things easier to pass. Okay, I think I've finished. I think so. It's not my favorite deck I've ever played. I feel like there's, uh, I want to put all kinds of stuff in here, but there's enough things that can, can help us get through. We're going to be doing a lot of basic uh, tests, which worries me about a bit with the clues, but maybe we just be recurring these look what I found over and over again, that that's okay. We might think about getting a, uh, prophetic or something else that helps us pay for this. Um, and if I really love the idea of lantern, I can get the upgraded one, which is, uh, only costs one. I think that's kind of worth it. I just do love the idea of you put it into play. It's minus one and it's kind of like a, a magnifying glass, right? Right. It's kind of like that. Plus the, um, discard it for one damage. Seems pretty nice. Um, we're just going to, pass those tests. I think we're just going to pass the, the basic punch. It's gonna be a little tough on the first scenario. We do want to get right into our quick learners, but I don't think there's that much XP to get both of them. We get the, the first, um, four will be spent on, on one, and then we'll see what happens after that. All right. I guess I should close out the video here. So thank you so much for watching. This is kind of what it looks like in my mind to go through uh, deck building. It does take a little bit more time usually in practice, but uh, for now, we're just going to stick with this. As I said before, this is something that happened because my patron said, play Stella. But please, if you enjoy this content and want to tell me what to play next, consider subscribing to my Patreon. It's in the link description below. Other than that, see you, I will see you next Wednesday, where I'll be playing the first scenario of Ends with Conspiracy with Stella.